beneath the hood of the data, things are not so good as they're being made out to be. Look at the increase in uh, fourth quarter GDP. Then look at the increase in debt. And what it's basically telling you is that for every, I've forgotten the exact number, for every 1% increase in GDP, you're actually um, having to spend 1.55 in debt. So we come back to what is actually driving the economy. Uh, is it real growth or is it debt-driven growth? And unfortunately, again, when you look under the hood, what's real inflation? I think the number, the GDP deflator that was used by BLS for the fourth quarter was 1.5%. That's down from 33 in the third quarter. But again, what is real inflation? Because ever since Arthur Burns in the 1970s, different administrations have altered the methodology of calculating CPI so that real CPI today is significantly higher than what the government says it is. Um, John Williams of Shadow Government Statistics actually takes all the workings back to when Arthur Burns, who's the first to manipulate the data, so that he goes back to using the formula um, that preceded Arthur Burns. And the real CPI today is running at around, I forget the exact number, but over 8%. Then you have the Chatwood survey, which is a survey done twice a year uh, covering 500 items that households regularly buy in 50 towns and cities across America. The last completed survey was the first half of uh, the, the last year. And what did that come out at? Over 10%. So reality is quite different from what the numbers are showing. And uh, if we look at the underpinnings of the uh, stock market, particularly the S&P, to use S&P as the example, what's been driving it? Seven stocks. And those seven stocks uh, technically look to be in a very precarious position. There's some suggestions saying that we could see a huge drop starting in the coming few weeks in the Magnificent Seven. Then if you look at what's happening in the, in the um, S&P banking index, technically that looks horrible. And that really mirrors what one is hearing around the traps what really is going on in the banking sector. So um, I think that by the mid this year, if not by April, we will be having a approximately 30% correction across the board in equity markets globally uh, and in base metal markets. I exclude oil because um, we could see quite soon a resurgence in oil prices because of what's happening in the Middle East. And here is another reason to uh, voice caution for the first half of this year. And that is there are ominous ominous signs that the situation in the Middle East 
is about to escalate. So you add the two to when that happens, then the Fed will be forced off its platform and by mid-year, probably in early in the second quarter, we will see the Fed being forced to liquefy the system and to lower interest rates. And the Fed will be followed by all G7 central banks. And that will lead to the dollar falling, a resurgence in, uh, in commodity and stock markets, probably by mid-2025, doubling from their low points in the first quarter. That might sound like good news. But the problem is inflation will be rising very sharply Global inflation probably in, in the order of 15%. So the bond market vigilantes will hate this. And that's when you see long-term interest rates using the 10-year US Treasury as an example, being well over 10% by the middle of 2025. And what does that do to the global system? It will crash it. So we are back to what we said last time we spoke, Anthony, that from 2025, probably for the next seven odd years, we will be in a, in a, in a period of rolling recessions, if not depression. 